you're, you're now uh, a software entrepreneur with a startup yes. uh, disrupting your own business model yes. with Global 14. Yes. So, so tell us about Global 14. So one day, um, you know, in these 20 years of having a record company, um, it was this one lifetime thing where I went to the office and I was trying to figure out why I spent $200,000 on uh, sosodev.com, right? And you know, back in this time when I'm talking about, when you go to a web designer, they would charge you an arm and a leg to build your website. Well, I was one of these people that got charged the arm and a leg, and probably the rest of my feet and everything else. Um, so we built this site that moves around and all of this, and you know, whatever was supposed to be like the fascinating website. But the traffic for my website was whack. Nobody was coming, and I don't even know if the content was right because my artist wasn't even paying attention to the website, right? So it was something that I started focusing on at this point, and I started saying, so then one day I created a blog, and my blog was Global 14. When I created my blog, more traffic was coming to my blog than they were my my. my website. And I'm saying, I did this for free, and I did this for nothing, and here I got a $250,000 website over here that nobody even care about. And I'm like, something ain't right. This is not right. So I'm constantly going through, watching this on a day-to-day -day basis, and I'm seeing comments over here and nothing over here. So then one morning I came to the office and I said, listen, today we're going to scrap sosodev.com and turn it into Global 14. And everybody in the office was like, what's wrong? What do you mean? We're going to kill off your own company. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm just going to merge with what I think that the people like and where they will pay attention more compared to what's going on in this right here. And that was the beginning of my introduction into creating Global 14, the social network. Um, what I found was that, like I said, I found that in, that in that little piece of time, I found that more people were interested in fashion, music, and other things that I would say, because on my blog I would give you more information about Jermaine Dupri than what you would get on sosodev.com, right? So I started noticing that, and then uh, probably about, uh, I would say probably like two years later, I, cre I, I, w I became the president of Virgin Records, right? And when I was at Virgin, um, Janet Jackson was the biggest artist on the label. I created this thing where her fans could create a, the cover. And I said, you know, I was on MySpace. This is interns, by the way. The interns at my studio, every time I walked out of the studio, they was on the computer. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? And they was like, we're on MySpace. And I'm like, what the hell is MySpace? And I'm thinking, like, I didn't know what MySpace was. I wasn't on it, whatever. So I, I, they introduced me to MySpace. I got on it. And I started realizing that I could finally talk directly to the consumer. Or I could see what the consumers are actually saying. So then I created that contest for Janet, for the people that I, I saw these kids sending pictures and saying, can you show this to Janet? I drew this for her, blah, 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 blah. And the artwork was better than the people that worked at the, at the building. These kids are like really, really talented. So I'm like, I go back in the office and I say, I want to do this contest for Janet where her fans around the world can draw the artwork and she'll pick four covers and we put these four covers out and whatever four covers, that's the covers that we use. The contest was going great. Everybody in the office thought it was incredible except for the legal boys. These legal knew guys. the lawyers had to get involved. These legal guys, they dress like you. <laughs> <laughs> so these legal guys come they in the ties. office and they say, well, um, Jermaine, this is cool, great contest, but we can't do this on a global scale. And I'm like, do you understand what we're talking about right now? You're talking about Janet Jackson. She probably got more fans in Europe than she has in the United States. These guys didn't care. They was just like, so what? You know, great idea, good for you, little guy, but we're not going to be able to do this globally. So from that day forth, it destroyed my relationship with the kids that I had on on MySpace. And what these, what these legal guys didn't understand is that I was talking directly to these people. Like they could get on the site and talk directly to me and get real information. That day they disrupted my conversation with them kids. 
And that's the day that I decided I needed my own situation so that I could get this information globally to everybody around the world. So, so that's, that's Global 14. That's Global 14. Um, I, I, I joined this weekend. Yeah, I I'm, saw. I'm, pro I'm, pro I'm probably the only 51-year-old white guy on nah, the side nah, right you're now. Not, so. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> but, but in all the poking around I did, I couldn't figure out what does the name mean? I get the global part. What's the 14? Uh, 14 is JD in numbers. Oh, okay. I didn't get Something to think about. Just, right. you know. I get, I get that. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Think about Very it. Cool.